Our next speaker has over 12 years of technical experience. He works as a senior manager at one of the most well-known tech companies in the world. <laughs> and he won't let me do a lengthy description. So here for you is Christopher Martin for Bosch. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks uh, also to the event organizers for uh, inviting me here today. And uh, thanks, all of you, for being very good troopers. Hopefully we'll make it through the last half an hour of the tech talks here and then uh, go enjoy a nice coffee together. Um, so the name of the talk that you see on your programs was supposed to be a play off of um, a Facebook relationship status, but then we had a, rela a Facebook person here, so I said, okay, let's skip that name for the talk. Um, so the audience for this is meant to be entrepreneurs, small and medium businesses who would like to go into this emerging internet, and things of, internet of Things and Services space. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about motivation. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about, say, problem space and also solution space. Um, but for those of you guys uh, that were watching the, uh, one of the keynotes yesterday, um, basically this is not Facebook 300 million users. Uh, this is you know, not the 5,000 users that uh, Mike Butcher's dog has somehow. I don't really understand how that happens. But you know, this is something, it's a different scale that we talk about when we talk about internet things and services. You're talking about stuff, real things. I'm not going to flip a switch and immediately, uh, especially when we're talking hardware, uh, where this stuff is, is out in the wild for 300 million people. Um, so this is me. Again, my name is Chris Martin. Um, so I work at Bosch at the Corporate Research and Technology Center in the United States. Uh, previously, I was at... Um, our facilities over in Germany, in southwest Germany, in Stuttgart. Also serve as an expert in uh, information, communica information and communication technology at the European Commission. Um, do a lot of work together with Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and the reason I'm here, I don't know if Bogdan is in the room, but uh, I was working together with Bogdan uh, with Springboard Techstars earlier in the year as a mentor, and now continuing on as a mentor um, with Plug and Play over on the west coast of the US and Alpha Lab uh, in my say, adopted hometown of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, I suck at social media, so feel free to follow me. You'll be like my 20th follower or something like that. I think I tweeted my eighth tweet today, so um, I'm going to avoid the social stuff. There's a lot more people that, uh, here that are a lot better than I am. Um, so let's talk also a little bit more about this Internet of Things and Services stuff. Um, I was really happy that Robin this morning uh, listed as his number one I don't know if it was chronological or importance or whatever, or the number one trend of this internet, what he called internet of everything, which I never use because it's the worst, and again, this is the guy who sucks at social media, the worst hashtag ever, internet of everything. Thank you, Cisco. Still call it internet of things and services. So everybody's got one of these. Um, I'm curious, who's got one of these? So, yes, oh, wow, all right, a couple people. So this is normally, I think you guys would see this as either green or blue here. This is a Bosch Ixo. It's the most popular power tool in the entire world. Buy one, it helps me eat. Um, so, you know, what's the difference between these two things? So, um, it also won a Red Dot Award, I think 2000, mid 2000s. Um, so, good design, um, good quality, that's what we do, Bosch, known for quality. Um, hopefully, it, yours hasn't broken on you. Um, but if you think about the difference between, say, your smartphone, iPhone, whatever, and this thing, this thing has no idea about how you're using it, right? Whatever, right? It also has no idea that about me, right? It, I could give it to you, you could turn it on, it has no idea. Um, so, well, it's, there are, it's, it's a physical device, you hold it in your hand, complex electronics, all this sort of stuff. Um, there's a fundamental difference. What's the difference? You know, and sorry, this is really stupid. I will not show more dumb slides like this. But it's the internet, right? All these amazing applications that you see, Facebook or Mixcloud or all this other social media or uh, things like um, quantified health, all these kind of things, that connectivity brings you a whole different level of interaction here. Um, so, all right, we have power tools, and that's just some stupid inanimate object, right? Um, let's also look at something boring, uh, like, the, like a thermostat. Um, I believe it was Alex yesterday, also on the stage, was talking about the Nest a little bit. Um, so a thermostat, it's pretty boring. Everybody's got one. Um, so this thing, now it used to be a dumb old plastic box, and um, this is kind of neat. This is actually mine. Brought it from Pittsburgh. Should not have done that. It's really cold there now. Um, so look at this thing, right? This thing now, this is the, just the ad from their website. It learns, right? It learns about you. It improves with time. 
It programs itself, right? It's this connectivity part of it. And so, you know, what's the difference? So now we have another example of kind of a boring, generic thing that now is through this connectivity through the internet, um, it now is able to learn about itself or how it's being used and about you. So, you know, who cares? It's a thermostat, whatever. Um, this, is, this is fantastic. Um, so this is guy, Tony Fidel. Um, he was co-founder, at least, of, of, uh, of Nest. So, um, all right, you know, nice to have music everywhere. I'm going to do something to change the world. I'm going to be a nice guy, save energy. All right, fine. Um, okay. You know, I'm going to go after big, dumb, slow companies. You know, come on, just take your Apple shares and go buy an island or something like that. Leave me alone. You know, why are you doing this? Why, why does this guy, the creator of the iPod, the designer of the iPod, I'm sorry, uh, designer of the iPod, care about this, this space, right? What's the difference? Um, so let's just look at a, one graph here. Um, so this is about world population, right? We're about 6 billion back in 2003, about 7.5 in 2020. Um, and though this is what we mean, or I think this is what Robin means when he talks about the Internet of Things and Service, Internet of Everything, Internet of Things and Services being a big trend going forward. So in 2003, right, none of us had this stuff, right? So this number back in 2003, there were about 500 million devices connected to the Internet. It's laptops, desktops, whatever. Um, you know, after the iPhone and everything, I mean, forget the complete explosion, about 12.5 billion in 2010, by 2015, it'll be about 25 billion, um, 50 billion by 2020. Um, these numbers, these absolute numbers, I think, are always a little bit difficult to judge. Um, so let's do a little bit of division here. By the way, these numbers come from Cisco, the Internet of Everything people, so this is not my numbers. Um, and so this is the devices per person that are connected to the Internet. And I think that starts to make sense, right? 2002, you had a, maybe you had an iPhone and you had a laptop. 2015, you've got that plus, you know, uh, maybe you got a Nest, maybe you got an Apple TV, uh, maybe you've got a, a, an iPad Mini. Um, but now you see that it starts to reach up. You know, once you've carried around all those pure computing devices, what are the what rest of those things going to be? And this is also divided over the world's population. And the, over the entire world, only about half the world's population has uh, access to the Internet. So you can actually double this number. So you're talking about, after you get rid of your laptop, iPad, and iPhone, you're still talking about 10 things that'll be attached to you that will be connected to the Internet. So what the hell are these 25 billion things going to be? And I think this is why our friend who designed the iPod cares about this. He sees the opportunity, as do many of us, to reach into that and start to connect these things to the internet uh, that previously weren't. Um, so, all right, great. Here's an opportunity. Let's all form a startup here. Let's go do this. Um, let's just pick an idea here, right? Let's, so let's put our collective heads together and do something about it. Um, so if we look around the room here, what's the most common object here in the room that is powered? Anybody? Come on, shout a guess. Help me. I'm oh, sorry, besides your cell phone. Close. All right, that's, like, that's pretty good. But so let's, let's about lights, right? Lots of lights in here. I guess that's kind of a dumb question because those lights aren't on. Somebody was admiring the chandeliers yesterday. So, you know what? Great. Let's go make an internet connected light bulb. Should be no problem, right? Come on. Um, surely nobody's thought of this. Um, somebody thought of this. So this is the top, sorry if you cannot see this very well, this is the top six um, technology-funded Kickstarter projects ever, um, LifeX light bulb. Has anybody in here by any chance a backer of this project? No, okay. Um, so if you can read it, they, well here, let me just go ahead. Um, so basically it's an LED internet-controlled light bulb. Um, and you can change colors and turn it on and off and whatever, cute little app. Um, and they raised $1.3 million through Kickstarter. It went so fast, they actually stopped the Kickstarter campaign and they raised another 10, well, I'm sorry, in total $10 million in pre-orders. And they said, you know, so, and, and if you, again, sorry, I apologize, the Kickstarter campaign 
finished in November of 2012, they said, this is no problem. Thank you guys for the $10 million. We will ship you your light bulbs in March 2013, five months later. Awesome. Internet of Things, it's happening. Um, this is a blog post, or I'm sorry, an update from their Kickstarter campaign. Um, again, I'm sorry if you can't see it. November 13th, 2013. Um, hey, we're just kind of finishing this up, coming out of the factory. You know, it's going to ro start rocking and rolling in the next couple of days. So, you know, seven, eight months later, and maybe you'll get it eventually. Okay, hardware problems. No problem, I understand. All right. Surely the software must be now easier. You know what? Our iOS app, though, that just got approved. But just hang on a couple more days, and you'll get your Android app. So this is the complexity that's involved in this Internet of Things and services area. Hardware is complicated. Software is complicated. Bringing it together is complicated. Um, how many of you guys have one, have one of these things? This is coincidence that that's red, and that's red, by the way. A Pebble smartwatch? Anybody? No, no smartwatch people. OK. All right, well, I have one. Um, so that's the CEO, by the way. Um, and this is an interview with him at the MIT Technology Review. And um, somebody asked him, so this is, by the way, the Pebble, I, I believe, and someone correct me if I'm wrong on this, the Pebble is the single largest Kickstarter campaign ever, so $10 million right off the bat on, on, on Kickstarter. So it's like legendary status crowdfunding, right? So somebody asked him, all right, CEO guy, you're the hottest wearable computing company, Kickstarter success, what, what, what keeps you up at night? And very similar to this discussion that we had here in the room yesterday was about people, right? It's, I need people. I need people to go do this, right? It's hiring. And so he's got 35 people working in his company right now. So again, why, what, what's, what's going on here? Why, why, is this, why is this so complicated? So let's look at this Internet of Things and Services buzzword, right? Internet, Things, Services. So you've got the network and connectivity portion of it, protocols, reliability, distributed systems, that plumbing uh, that, uh, that Paul Ford talked about yesterday. You got the things, so you got hardware and all the complexities that go about with that. Just out of curiosity, how many people consider them themselves more hardware people here? You're a hardware engineer, hardware geek? One, two, okay, all right. That, I'm going to pander to you in a couple of seconds and then we'll move on. Um, so we got the hardware side, which Hardware is hard, funny, huh, joke, it's all the way down. Um, and then I'm assuming that the rest of the people here are, are software, software developers, software engineers. So, you know, just to go back here, so internet, things, services, if you're going to build a product in this area, you got to build it in all, you got to touch all these different parts. So let's look at like hardware for a second. Again, for the hardware engineers in the, in the room, you know, this is just a quick, buzzwordy 10,000, 50,000 foot view on here. If you want to build something, these are just some of the different things you've got to worry about. If you're talking about a lot, if you get a second, if you care about this, go back and read the updates on that LifeX light bulb thing. Um, about half, <laughs> about half the, the, the posts and half the information there has to do with certification to different standards, be able to sell it in the US for in, the, in the EU and around the world. Gee, that's exciting. I can't wait to go win this, play in this area. Yay, standards, certification, very exciting. So, I mean, you, you have to have people that know how to do this, right? So you need people here. So let's think about the other part. And so network, software, you know, we're all network programmers and all this kind of stuff. We know how to play with the Internet, build stuff on top of it. Um, so let's just think of these two combined for a second. Um, now, also to get a little bit extra corporate-y on you for a second, um, every year Gartner big consulting firm, earns a lot of money from Fortune 500s. They release uh, their top 10 technology trends for the coming year. Um, so I guess they were one better than Robin was earlier this year. Um, but yeah, um, one or, or, earlier today. Um, at the end of 2012, they released a special addendum to this where they said, well, look, it's not just that these technologies are emerging, but you as uh, people in the, uh, operating in the technology space, you won't just be, you could be just a mobile company, or you could just be a big data company, or et cetera, et cetera. But if you're working in the IT industry, you better quickly master the use of these different technologies, or else you're going to get run over, because the customer expectation in this area is advancing very quickly. Um, so th these were their four 
um, because um, I'm also kind of a security dork. I used to run the security research team uh, for Bosch uh, the last couple of years. I'm going to put my fifth of security on there. So now this is where I want to talk to you a little bit about if you want to get into this Internet of Things and Services area, what can you do? What are the opportunities that you have for you or small or medium enterprise or a startup team? How can you possibly master all this stuff and go after this, especially if we, if we see some of these more uh, challenging, not failures, but difficulties that the people have? Um, so let's look at, you know, for if you want to, this, this cloud portion of it. Right, so, oh, by the way, this is going to be the, the typical internet refrigerator thing. This is that, that, that box with the handle and the window on it that's supposed to be a refrigerator. Um, this is why my slides suck compared to everybody else's that you saw today. So that's an internet refrigerator for the purposes of this exercise. Um, so if you want to get this thing on the cloud, you have to go from the refrigerator, through the router, in through, through the public internet. Um, there's some, I don't know, hosted by Rackspace or whoever our nice cloud provider is, and you've got some business logic or the app that controls that thing. You know, blah, 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 right? Um, but basically, you got waveforms on one end, and you want a function call on the other. You just want to write something, do it, and, and, and have something at the end. So, you know, what are your, your requirements that are going on here? So you want round-trip performance, so if somebody presses the button on your app, you want them to, to, to be satisfied that things are controlled. And you also want reliability. So you want it either bounded, you want it to make sure it works. Um, so you could build this thing yourself, you know, grab a couple of Arduino boards, stick it on there, do some soldering, grab an Apache server, write an application on top of it, blah, 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 blah right? Um, or why don't you just go out and buy a solution for this happening? Maybe if that's your thing, go for it, do it. Um, but there are, there is also another relatively new startup in the last couple of years called Electric Imp. Um, and I have, uh, know some companies that are using them to good effect, um, that, uh, you know, you could pay literally $20, boom, done. You don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff. They host, they show you how to integrate the product, they'll help you with this, this kind of stuff. Um, by the way, I should say that this is the portion of the talk where I start to talk about a lot of different companies or startups or whatever. I have no financial interest in them. I know for somebody will definitely say, well, what about this guy or what about them? Also, surely perfectly valid. This space is moving so fast. Um, this is just, say, a first impression of it. Um, Big Data, we saw a talk yesterday also by, by Philip. So let's say that we have a bunch of data. You know, we've, we've sold 1,000 or 10,000 of our, of our smart refrigerators, and we start getting this data. How often is the light on? What's the temperature? What are people putting in it? You know, whatever. Just tons of this data coming off. Um, and now I want to do some analytics. Uh, whatever. I want to know how often, how much time do people leave their, 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 their doors open for their refrigerators? How often is it failing? Um, so think of the talk from yesterday. And I don't know if Philip is still here. But you know, the, I, I asked them the question. I'm like, OK, well, how long does it take for you to set this thing up? You know, so I'll just have a, just a generic time series beta, database where, again, performance, so both for in terms of storing things uh, as well as as this thing gets bigger, you know, can, can it handle the extra data that I'm putting in it? Um, so you could just go, this is all open source stuff, all open source, right? Just go grab MongoDB, yeah, MongoDB um, spin up a, an Amazon uh, EC2 server, dump it on there, start throwing data at it, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you remember from, from uh, Phil, uh, Philip's talk, he said, well, you know what, it'll take a junior database engineer about two weeks to do this, and could even take a senior engineer, and then you have to ma uh, maintain it and, and all that kind of stuff. Do you really have time to do this if you're a startup or whatever? Or to, to, you know? What if you were to just go and talk to these guys, again, just a, a startup from Techstars, actually? Um, you know, they'll sell you this thing for $100 a month, which will get you to tens of thousands of users. And eventually, if you get to that point, you can just go roll your own. That's fine. But $100 a month. I'd rather pay $100 a month and try to learn database schema. Have fun. Um, security and privacy. Now, um, the American is standing on stage talking about security and privacy. This is great. Um, so our fridge, right? The fridge, is, the fridge is watching you. I mean, literally, it is actually watching you. That's the whole point of the smart fridge, right? So you've got some application logic on there. There's some data that's being collected. You know, maybe there's a gateway or a router. There's probably some logic on there, especially if it's talking over something, uh, maybe not, not Wi-Fi. Um, you know, on the server, definitely, um, you've got uh, logic and you've also got data on there. 
Um, and uh, your mobile phone, right? I mean, the mobile phone is, is, is um, has also, it's got your app, or whether it's native or, or HTML, and it's also got collecting data about you. Um, you know, and then this, all this stuff is connected. So the term we, in, in, the, in the security engineering industry, we call this the attack surface. So the attack surface for vulnerabilities into this system is ridiculous, right? So you've got, and, and I'm not even talking necessarily about compliance to privacy laws in all different regions. I'm just talking about how you would get um, unauthorized access to, to the system. So you've got security for both the devices and the applications, and of course also the communication between the two of them. Um, you know, one way that we do this is basically go out and just throw a whole lot of tests at it, right? Just penetrate, penetration test, penetration test, penetration test. Um, security engineers are expensive. Um, I don't know if you know any security geeks, but you know, they're probably working at Google now. Um, so making a lot of money. Um, and using really complicated tools. Um, again, another startup, uh, what they did was they said, well, look, we've got a bunch of these guys that um, you know, they register on our website, and if you've got a problem, if you've got a security question, you can talk to them. And uh, uh, they'll, you can you put out a bid for them, and they'll, and they'll, they'll talk to you about this. Um, they'll give you a say, well, look, I will solve your problem, or I will analyze your system for you for about $10,000 or something like this, whatever it is. But you don't have to buy the tools, you don't have to be an expert. Um, and then you have to decide, is it worth it to you to guarantee the security and privacy of the system for your users? Um, I'm going a little bit slow here, so I'm going to skip this part of it. Um, the point is, is that there's all so many different options and potential partners and choices in here. You know, this top row is a lot of this platform as a service kind of thing. The middle part of it is, is hardware as a, connected hardware as a service. This last part is, is almost kind of product as a service within the home automation space. And, and you know, these people are kind of still starting out what they really want to do, what the business model will be. Um, the point is, I think if you have a great product idea, you can go out there and try to partner with somebody. This is a wonderful American politician. I don't know if anybody remember who this face is, but he had this infamous quote a couple of years ago where he talks about there are known knowns, there are known unknowns, and there are also unknown unknowns. So part of doing a startup is that you don't know what you don't know. You're going to go out into the wild. I'm going to build the plane after I jump off the cliff or something like that, right? That's fine. Um, but the known knowns, that's what you're good at. I'm going to go do this startup because I'm awesome at building hardware or you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a mobile application developer or whatever. But you also, I think, if you're going to go into this space, have to recognize what you don't know. If you're a mobile application developer, don't try to immediately go and say, you know what, I'm going to optimize the heck out of this Ar Arduino implementation or something like this. So you have to be aware of what this is. Why is this relevant? Um, is, I think that comes back to the discussion that was that had in the, in the panel, is you have to focus on what, you, what you're good at and go and buy what you need, they, they say these non-essential pieces for your least viable product. Uh, and there's a lot of options to go out there. So all of this stuff taken together, you know, this is the IoT, but this is really the IoT. And ultimately, when you're pitching to investors, uh, when you're trying to convince people, um, and when you're ultimately going to ship to your customers, it's the round-trip user experience. It's all of this stuff. The hardware, the software, the cloud, all of that kind of stuff. Your user isn't going to say, oh, you know what, that connected product I bought, was aw it, it's awesome, but the mobile app sucks, so, you know, whatever. You know, they need the whole thing. And so, you know, I guess um, as we kind of wrap up here, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and then what I think that this is also for, for founders and CEOs of startup companies that go into this space, you really have to ask yourself, you know, when you're going, yes, you're a hardware engineer, but either you have to be willing to take on another hat or share that hat and say, you know what, I am now more of a product manager than a hardware engineer in this case. It is now your obligation to your idea, to your startup, to shepherd this idea throughout all these different aspects, to make sure that you have a top-notch user experience across all these different elements of the technology. So it's not just about doing you know, uh, soldering or, or, or about coding or whatever it is. You really got to be much more of, a, say, a systems engineer, a product manager, and bring all this stuff together. Um, I don't have any actual original thoughts, and it's funny. This was also seen on the, the slides earlier this morning. I forget who, who was showing this. I think it was uh, 
Um, I don't know if it was Alex or whatever, yesterday. Um, so this is Isaac Newton. He says, if I've seen farther than others, it's because I was standing on the shoulders of giants. Um, and there's a sort of a dis famous quote from a disgruntled American computer scientist, and he says, in computer science, we stand on each other's feet. Um, so I guess my takeaway, or my, what I want you guys to take away, so besides this focus aspect, is don't stand on each other's feet. Make friends with each other. So many of those, those, uh, those companies I mentioned before, they're startups, they're looking to play together, they all want to succeed. Make some friends and use these other a APIs and these other services uh, in order to help your product succeed. Thank you, Chris. I bet there are some questions for Chris, aren't they? <laughs> Do I see any hands up? <laughs> Welcome to being the last talk before the, uh, there. Before the uh, coffee break. At least it's not the last talk before the wine break, right? <laughs> Good wine here, by the way. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I'm uh, Christian Bader from Avangate. So you teased us 30 minutes and I thought you're going to show us the electrical screwdriver that is going to be connected to the internet. When is this thing going to be uh, released? I understood that uh, such things take time and it's a complex, uh, a very complex uh, thing to do, but I thought that this is the actual uh, destination that you're going to show us there. And more internet devices from Bosch <laughs> that are going to be it were going to be used like in 2020. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a totally valid question. Um, if you notice, I intentionally did not use the platform as any advertisement for any Bosch product, other than the Ixo, but I mean, whatever. Um, I, you know, we, we can certainly have that conversation. I think what potentially is even more interesting to answer that question is, I'm not sure if you saw Robin's talk on, 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 the, on the keynote this morning, Robin Walters, is he showed a lot of different startups and communities that are, uh, that are really attacking this in very specific application areas. Um, so even if you think of, the, you talk later on also about like the connected car, right? That's certain something. We're the largest automotive supplier in the world, and so we're helping to make that a reality also. Um, but I mean, certainly we can, I can speak till I'm blue in the face about Bosch stuff, but I think probably more interesting here is to see how entrepreneurs and small and medium businesses are going after this and some of the cool stuff they'll, they'll build. Thank you. Other questions? Hi, my name is Dimitr from a company called ConIT at Bulgaria. I have a background in information security, which more or less is bad for a startup because, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's my question more or less as you're a mentor as well. Uh, do you promote information security for startups, especially because of the problems that you mentioned? for uh, privacy, et cetera. Uh, do, you, do you ask them to, how do you go about them? Do you tell them to insource it? Or do you uh, promote, uh, for example, other services that um, inspect for, um, sorry, for vulnerabilities and stuff? I think it depends. So let me make sure I understand your question is, did you want to do a startup around information security? Or if you're doing a no, 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 no. Um, yeah. My company uh, deals with web and uh, mobile applications, and uh, I have uh, huge problems with uh, telling everybody that they should, uh, out of the test, uh, uh, that, that they should integrate information security tests in the test process, and not just, does it work? Yay. And, then, uh, and it's very difficult uh, for, for me to persuade developers to, to test information security stuff. And they, they, they just drop it because it's not interesting to them. And it's uh, cross-site scripting, maybe sometimes. Yeah, I mean, I think that the, the simple answer to this, and obviously I'm biased, but is yes. I mean, er, people playing in, say, this connected product space have to consider security and also privacy. Um, I mean, we've seen so many you know, high-profile examples of things failing lately uh, in that way. And so, I mean, I think if you have the resources and you can handle it in-house, I mean, great. I mean, that's that's the best way. It'll always be cheaper if you can. I just see. I I, I in the number of the mentors that I that I or I'm sorry, the startups that I mentor or talk to, so few have security ex experts that they have access to because the, it's a competence that's in such high demand all over the world right now. Cool. Thank Thanks. you. One last question here. 
Hello, my name is Ciprian. Uh, you mentioned lots of interesting startups that provide services that other startups might need, especially in the Internet of Things space. Uh, but you come from Bosch, which is a big corporation in this space. So how does Bosch collaborate with this ecosystem of startups operating in this world since um, you know, I think uh, many of them would provide services useful to you. Do you have active collaborations or in what, which areas, how does it work? This is a really good question. Um, so the reason I'm, well, at least part of the reason why I'm standing here uh, is because we are trying to increase our level of engagement in that way. Um, so for example, when we sponsored um, the Springboard, now Techstars, uh, I, uh, Internet of Things and Services um, Accelerator over the beginning of the year, it was to try to see how startups were using the technology, developing their technology. Could they be partners? Could they be customers for us? Could they be suppliers for us? So things like participating and sponsoring accelerators, well, it's, it's, it was uh, Techstars in the past, uh, plug and play on the West Coast in the, in the future. Um, but that's not all, all, our only way. We also have, um, with, there's some, there's part of Bosch called Bosch, um, uh, software innovations, and there's a community and partner manager there at the, uh, the VP level whose job it is to interact with them, and also, you know, he's a software guy, uh, so not just, you know, the guy making the power tools, um, other engagement with the universities, et cetera, et cetera. So I would not say that we're awesome at it, but I think we're working on it. Um, and uh, we, want, we, we see that this is not something where every, every piece of hardware or software that people buy in the future is not going to have a Bosch stamp on it. We've got to be able to play, play well with others, too. Thank you. Cool. Thank you, Chris.